In this lecture, we're going to be doing a still life drawing of a city street. Now, I really highly recommend that when you do your still lifes of landscapes and cityscapes that you actually go to location. It's actually pretty fun and exciting to sit down on a bench and sketch whatever it is you see in front of yourself. You'll actually probably get a lot of people sitting down and talking to you and asking to see your artwork. So let's go ahead and get started. So the first thing I like to do when I'm drawing my cityscapes is I like to break down my image into sections, into fourths, thirds, and tenths. So let me show you what I mean. So first, we're going to break this down into thirds. So this large building right here that takes up the bulk of my image takes up about two thirds of my image. So I can go ahead and add that in to my drawing. So I'm starting just by lightly sketching it in and I'm just doing a large block. So I'm not adding any detail, I'm not adding any perspective yet. I just want to do something very simple. Next, I'm going to go ahead and add in this building next to it. And if we have a look at our reference, you'll see I can break this down and it's about one tenth of the way or maybe one sixth of the way into our image. So let's go ahead and draw that in. And just copying the lines and the perspective that I see my image and I'm keeping this very rough and very light because I can always come back and change it. I just really want to start putting marks down because otherwise you're going to be too afraid to do anything. So you need to just start putting marks down as quickly as possible and don't worry about it too much. Then I'm going to go ahead and add this building in. And then I'm making sure that the sidewalk on the other side of the street is following that same perspective. And the further down the street we get, it starts to curve around. Then I'm going to start blocking in this building right here and I'll add a little bit more detail with more perspective and I'll add that perspective right there also and that side of the building too. And I can't stress enough how important it is to make sure that you keep everything very light in this first phase because it's very hard to just go straight into drawing a perfect drawing of architecture. And so by drawing it in very lightly, you're going to be able to go in there and keep reworking it and reworking it, erasing areas, and just making sure that it all looks correct. Now I'm going to go ahead and start adding in more detail. So I'm going to start by adding this doorway and then this window and you'll see I keep coming back to that point over there towards the right side of my image and that's my vanishing point. So this is a one point perspective drawing and I don't have an exact vanishing point but I'm just eyeballing it so that everything is leading to the same vanishing point or the same area at least. Then I'm blocking in sort of a truck back there and the lines for my windows. And again, it's not even close to perfect. I'm just blocking it in at this point. I can go in and add detail and make it look more realistic later. This is all about quickly getting those shapes in there. And all you really want is you just want your viewer to be able to understand what they're looking at at this point. So just minimal detail is all you need. And I'm going to start blocking in this doorway. And I'll block in the window above it. And I'm noticing that it's incorrect. It's too tall and the door is too short. So I had to fix that. And still, I'm keeping everything very, very light. We won't start adding darker detail in until later. Then there's a lamp post right there, so I'll add that in. And then I saw that it was a bit shorter, so I could go ahead and erase that and fix it. And then I'll add in the detail for this top part of the window. I'll go ahead and add in the bottom part of this doorway. It's important to remember that this doesn't have to be perfect, especially in this phase. It can be as rough as you need it to be, and you really just want to get the layout in there. That's all this phase is about, is about creating a layout for you to follow later in your drawing. So then you can start adding in your shadows, your highlights, and all of your detail. Now I'm going to start adding in a few little people just for scale so that we can understand how big these buildings are. Add a few people back here. And even these people are extremely rough. They don't need to be perfect yet. 
Now I'm laying down a piece of paper so I don't smudge my drawing. And now I'm gonna start really detailing in all of my stuff. So starting with this lamp, I've darkened it in. And now I'm gonna start darkening in this doorway. And the point of this drawing is not to make it as realistic and detailed as possible. It's just to understand the shapes, the perspective, the values, and the highlights and shadows. That's what this is all about. It's about understanding and learning. It's not about making a perfect product. So you'll see here that as I fill in these windows, I'm not making it perfect. I just want to get the idea across that there are black windows and they have white frames around them. I'm going to add a little bit of shading in there, some cast shadow, and then I'll darken in that and add a little bit of text there. And you can't even see what it says because the point of this, like I said, is not to make it perfect and exactly as you see it. It's just to study it and understand what's going on in this image. And I'll go ahead and darken this parking meter. And then there's sort of a pole sticking off right there and another one right there too and it has a flag hanging off of it, so I'll add in that flag. And then I'm gonna start detailing this molding on the building, and I'm just jumping around from thing to thing because I don't wanna overwork an area. And I'll go ahead and start adding in the ledge on this window way, or window opening. And then I can start adding in those window panes just by adding dark squares of value, like so. And then I'll add some shadow to that side. And then I'm going to add in this molding on my building. And then I'm going to start breaking this up for the pattern that's going to be applied to it because it's kind of a stone stacked brick type of building. And so I'll go ahead and add in that detail. And I'll add in the shadow underneath that bottom edge. And so what I really want you to understand from watching me do this is that it doesn't have to be perfect. The main idea is that you get your viewers to understand what they're looking at. Understand what the object is and how the light is playing off of it. Nothing has to be perfect. This isn't a final fully rendered finished drawing. It's just a study. Then I'm gonna start darkening the sidewalk area and then move on to this doorway. So I'm gonna start by darkening this area down here and detailing my guy out a little bit more. And then I'll add a hard edge to that. And now I want to add in the detail that I see within this doorway. So there's sort of a dark alleyway going down that direction. And then I notice there's some shadow up there. And then I'm gonna break it up into the individual window panes like so. Then I'm gonna go ahead and start working on this door and the doorway. And just like with our banana drawing, I'm just trying to draw exactly what I see, the same values, the same shapes, and I'm just trying to understand how this image is working and how the light is playing off of each object. That's all I wanna do. Next, I'm gonna start adding sort of that tone stone texture along the side of this building and then we'll break it up into separate areas. Then I'm gonna bring this crown molding across the top of this building right here. And then I'll add that same edge to my building so I can add in those lines across. And so those are kind of individual stone slabs going across there. Then I'll start adding it in to this side of the building. Next, I'm gonna start adding the detail on the top of this doorway or the top of this arch. Make sure that you're looking back at your image or the still life that's actually in front of you and always be looking back at it for reference. 
All the information you need is right there in front of you. You just have to look at it and find it. So if you don't know if there should be a shadow in a certain area, all you have to do is look at your reference, look at the still life in front of you, and that will tell you exactly where to put that shadow. And I'm gonna start adding this balcony up here. And again, I'm not getting into too much detail. I'm just adding enough detail that you get the idea that there's sort of a cast iron balcony right there. I'm just adding a dark shadow edge to that and then adding the molding that goes across that edge of the building. And then I'm going to start adding in the grid system right here for my window panes. And then I can start filling those in individually like I did with the window panes beneath it. So even though these aren't perfect black squares, they get the idea across that there are window panes in this window. And that's all we need is we just need to get the idea across. We need to get the idea across through highlights and shadows, values, and lines. Then I'm going to go ahead and continue those lines across that side of the building. And I'll add that legend. And then I'm going to go ahead and add in these windows on the second story and the third story. So then I'll add the detail on top of that window. Then I'll add in this ledge, and I kind of added a rounded curve to it because that's what I'm picking up from my reference, is that it's sort of a rounded balcony. Then I can go ahead and continue these lines across here, like so. Then I'm dividing this up so I can fill in each individual window pane. All right, so that brings us to the end of this lecture. So I don't want this to go on for too long, so I'm not going to finish the entire drawing, but you should get the idea of how to create a still life drawing of a landscape or a cityscape. This is really important if you want to create environmental designs to understand how objects play off of each other on a large scale, such as buildings, mountains, trees, whatever it may be. It's really important to do studies of this, and you're going to really start discovering things that you didn't understand about the world that you'll start to understand through value, highlights, and shadows, and shape, perspective, and many other things. Thanks for watching this lecture, and I really look forward to seeing you in the next one.